Welcome back on the AM show and we continue our conversation, salient conversations. And um, we're going to be talking about the power issues because now the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission has issued a directive to the Electricity Company of Ghana asking for an incident report. They are also asking for detailed information on power outages starting from January the 1st, 2024. The question is, why are all of these things happening? I have a personal question as an individual, but maybe collectively as well. I use the Comstrap 2 kind of ECG meter, and guess what? In recent times, it's been problematic. The same thing happened sometime last year, where for a whole week, five days, I was without power. It took some intervention from the managing director of the ECG, um, Samuel Dubik Mahama. I had to place a call to him, and uh, some things eventually uh, were done. But right now, another issue that is pending. Those using Comstrap 2, I don't know whether it's nationwide, but those in my community, including me, you cannot load electricity even if you have money. You can't buy at a vendor because there's no connection. You also cannot use the app on your phone. It basically means you have money, you want to purchase electricity credits, and you can't. Your food or whatever in your freezer or fridge will go bad. If you have equipment, there may be issues, you cannot iron your clothes, you may have to go out. That is the sort of inconvenience. And then there's the other issue that uh, the PURC is addressing. But joining us uh, for a conversation on that all-important matter, we have Kojo uh, Poku, and he is an energy analyst. He joins the conversation. Kojo, good morning. Hi, uh, good morning, my brother. How are you? I am well, and uh, especially relevant as you are a member of the MPP's Energy Committee when it comes to the manifesto. I'm sure these two issues I've just put forward, I'm sure you heard them. You know of the PURC issue, and then I've just added our Camstrap 2 uh, circumstance where, again, here you are. You have money, you want to purchase credits, and you can't. For me, it's been two days now. Last year, it was five days. But what do you make, for starters, of that development in respect of the metering? Well, um, you know, the metering is also affected by the internet. So I, the internet I, I know that, down, but I'm reliably informed that yes, this I'm doesn't just, have I'm to just do saying, that. I'm just saying that that could be a reason, because you said that the last two days. Mm. And the last two days, you have um, experienced connectivity issues with the internet. Mm. Because what it does is that your meter uses the SIM card in there. The same like the cellular network, which has not been working, to mm. connect with the server in the billing system. Um, so that could be the issue in the last two days. I'm so, not saying that is, but right. it could be. I made, I made um, the inquiry. I made the inquiry because I thought it could be that, and I was told it wasn't that. In fact, you know, there are different types of meters, and uh, the yeah. camstrap is a bit advanced. In fact, it is being phased out. But you know that this is free, and let me make that point. It comes to mind. I know of people who have gone because I hear ECG has outsourced to some people and some people go and say, oh, they are getting you the new meter and pay. It is free. You are not supposed to pay for these meters. If people come to you and they say pay for them, they are lying. So call them out. You can reach out to Joy News, Joy FM, and let's deal with such people. But they are going through a phase of taking out these Comstrap 2 uh, meters. It's a slow process. I, I know how it's gone. It, it, it seems to be a problem with those specific meters rather than any internet connectivity issues. But in the meantime, in my community alone, I know seven people personally who are going through the same situation where they can't purchase credits. Do you know what that means? That means even without yeah, the regular power outages, you, you are still without power. Yeah, I think um, the solution in most cases has been that people are given, that those meters are taken away and whilst you don't have one to replace immediately, everybody is given a flat rate to pay. Um, the flat rate is like a, sh a, 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 a gap measure, okay, to basically make sure that you have connectivity to your house whilst ECG resolves the problem that exists. Mm -hmm. um, please do contact the customer service in your area. If you can let me know the area of air, I can tell the regional um, engineer who can also be of assistance. Mm. Let's get now to the substantive issue. Uh, the PRC has communicated to the ECG in very certain terms, no uncertain terms, saying it has seven days 
to provide a detailed incident report on power outages. You do know as well that, especially the business community among others, people have called on the ECG to come out with a timetable so that they know and they can plan. Um, before you get to the PRC statement, what do you feel about that call for a timetable now so that we know when there's going to be a power outage rather than just be there and boom, power is gone? Well, um, we have tried to explain to the public the reason for the outages. And I have always said that there are a mixed bag of problems out there right now. There are localized problems, which the ECG has come out to say that it's a result of in certain areas, there are transformers overloaded. Now, the localized problem, it will be difficult for anybody to give a timetable for localized problems. Now, let's talk about the bigger picture. In the last six to seven weeks, we have had um, intermittent and regular power outages across the country. And some of us have come out to basically explain that is as a result of some maintenances that have been ongoing. The plan that was done didn't go well because some companies were supposed to come back for maintenance and they couldn't come back on the time that they're supposed to come back. A big example of that is Engas, who were supposed to come back at a certain time of their maintenance to guarantee us the 50 mm gas of gas, um, the 50 mm scarf of gas that comes from Nigeria, and that maintenance delayed a little. So the pressure from Nigeria is not as we expect it to be. So that has also created some shortages in the gas that we get. You have Tico, Tico and Tapco, which went into maintenance last year and has still not fully um, come back into our stream. Then you have View Power, who also have some challenges with one of their units, and they are trying to repair that. And that right. is our peaking plant. Then you have Amandi which nobody thought would go through the situation that is going through now, because it's a rel relatively new machine, and Amandi at times is down. So these misbag of um, misfortune or mishaps, should I say, and the maintenance is creating that shortfall in the peak time. It's difficult to give a timetable when you don't know what your demand is going to be at peak, because you do have the supply. Now, if the peak wait, is Wait, low, wait, wait, wait. You're saying we don't know what our demand will be at peak? I thought I yes, thought we had what, specific you don't know what figures. Your demand be Say it again. I thought I thought, and I've even heard the ECG boss talk about at peak times. We we expect around this this figure. Uh, I just it just escapes me what he mentioned, but we know we well, have but, we have but, a bracket. But that is yes. But if that is the peak, then you will not have to load shed in that instance because you know what your mean your mean is roughly. You know what your mean is because. They do this reconciliation maybe around before four o'clock every day between Greco and all the IPPs and ECG. Mm. Now, at that time, everybody knows that everything is fine. But then you now have an unexpected load, which is the peak. Because, the, look, no electricity in one day is the same. Okay, we don't have the set electricity after six o'clock, one set of electricity. The demand on the grid varies day to day. In some days, it's very low. In some days, it's very high. Recently, we've gone through very heat waves, okay, where we are experiencing um, heat of about 40 degrees Celsius, which is unprecedented, never happened in Ghana. So, in but, but we also know exactly what is happening, Kojopoku. And this is where sometimes I get, I get a bit. We know, we've been told that the, the positioning of the equator and where Ghana is positioned, and that for months I have read um, uh, a GMET yes, or some I, other but, report but, but, about that. So it's not like we don't know. We've been told for a number yeah, of months, but, but maybe three or four months, we'll that, go through What this. I'm saying to you is that, Ben, what I'm saying to you is that we know the heat wave is there. Whether Kwesi Mensa or Yamenu put on their air, their air condition, I don't know that. You don't know that. The point I'm making is that, yes, we know the heat wave is there. But whether people put on their ACs at night, who knows that? Doesn't so stand to reason. That, Doesn't stand to reason that the hotter it gets, people will want to cool down, and definitely you can expect that people will use this. Doesn't not stand to reason. Yes, that is the that is the logic. But I can't give you a timetable based on that. That's the problem. What I'm saying to you is that we have the capacity, the load, the the, the supply is there. Now, if I know that I have over let's say four thousand supply on the system or I have, let's say, 3,500 supply on the system. Then in the evening, my peak load now goes more than the supply I have. Then I have to manage the frequency on the grid. Then I take some areas of how do I give timetable for that eventuality? That's the point I'm trying to make. Look, so, so, in so, the time past, mm. but let me explain this. In the time past, 
when timetables were given for six months, there was a reason for that because we knew that no matter what we do, even Confanochi comes, we are short of 300 megawatts. So we can plan that effectively within the next six months that look, here's a timetable. This is how we are going to basically uh, shed load for the next six months because we don't have 300 megawatts. We are not in the same situation now. Now, let me add this. I don't know whether some journalists cannot read or it's mischief. Everybody, most front pages are saying that, oh, the PULC have asked ECG for a timetable. No, they have not done that. If you read the directive from PULC... Well, I don't think that has been point, referenced <laughs> here. I don't think that has been referenced no, here. No, but it's in, it's in a lot of front pages that hmm. EC, PULC have asked ECG for Dooms or timetable. They have asked it's for an, an incident not, report. Uh, hmm. So say that again? They've asked for an incident report which is what yes, we have reported. And also, they've asked for a timetable for the areas where they will be doing the transformer insertion and work on transformers. Because mm. remember, ECG came out and said that there are about 630 transformers that are overloaded and they need to replace them or do True. insertions. True. So what PLC is saying is that in those areas, the time that you'll be doing that work, provide timetable for the communities where th that will be affected. That is the timetable that PLC is asking ECG for. PULC have not asked ECG to provide a doomsday timetable or a load shedding timetable, as many journalists have put out on their front pages and social media. It's really sad. Look, are we out there to educate the public or just to create sensation? This is a problem where people think that creating a timetable will go to, um, I, I don't know, but it, it gives me some level of political connotation because nobody's scared of giving a timetable. I could do Poku will ask for a timetable if the situation arises. But and, as and, it stands now, that and, you can't keep one. Right. And, and that's what I find, because I go back to some of your utterances in the erstwhile administration. And you, you, you were talking about timetables, load shedding timetables, and, and the yes. need for them at a point. I remember clearly you were talking about them. Yes. Uh, you were basically saying, and mind you, this erratic power situation, Ghanaians, if we activated the phone lines now, would have quite a take on this has been going on, if I'm not mistaken, for about two years, on and off, on and off situation, this and that. There's always an explanation. Listen, Ghanaians well, are tired. Well, no, 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 hold on, hold on for me, for, hold like, for me. Ben, lights have been going off since Kwame Nkrumah. So uh, those, uh, there, there, there's a difference, there's about. a what, difference. What, what if, 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 What's the difference? If every week my lights go off maybe two or three times a week, Sometimes I am not okay. home. You will come back and gadgets, you can tell. And then you ask and someone will tell you, oh, the light went off maybe around 10 in the morning or 9 in the morning, came back at this time. You can tell because some gadgets are, my fridge now is acting up. I have a friend whose freezer has gone bonkers and the person gave them two options. You can fix it for a cost of over 2,000 CDs, but there's no guarantee that this will last. And so you may have to do this again in the shortest possible time. They had to cough up money to go and buy a brand new uh, deep freezer. So this is not a situation of if or when. It is happening. And it has been going on for yes, quite a I, while I now. Agree, for about, I agree with you. Is this not long enough for us to know exactly what is happening and, and plan no, along? Ben, I agree with you. But you see, Ben, the situation you just explained, we all agree. That is why some of us were very sad when the PSP was cancelled. Look, as far back as 20. Um, 16, 2015, we knew that ECG needs about $500 million worth of investment. We went into Compact 2 and said that, look, we, we should bring a private company who will inject $110 million into ECG every year. Unfortunately, that process was truncated because of the problem with PDS. When we truncated that process, I, some of, most of us have asked the government that PSP should happen, okay, because ECG do need that investment. Now, that investment has not happened. We have done, the government has found money to do certain things. But the most of the transformers, most of the equipment that ECG have are, are old. So the low voltage and the high voltage that you are describing, which is causing havoc to people's machinery, needs to be changed. That needs to be solved. One of the things that my committee is looking at is that we make sure that Ghanaians have what you call reliable, stable, and affordable power. What you are describing is not what we are supposed to give Ghanaians. So I agree with you. But is it enough to give a timetable on that? The fact that there's going to be high voltage or low voltage, can I give you a timetable on low voltage and high voltage? That is the problem. You see, well, there are two instances. I think that whenever there is a problem, ECG should communicate effectively to Ghanaians. That is not happening. In some instances, yes, they come up with flyers to tell people the areas that are going to go off.
but they work with what you call electrical and mechanical gadgets. If something happens immediately, what next? The effective communication of these um, information and what is happening is what we should all push for. But this, this thing of obsession with timetable, what does that solve? It doesn't solve anything. That's the point I'm making. I see. As the business community has said, I wish, uh, I wish we could speak to some members of the business community. I believe over time we would do that. But it would have been interesting because in recent times we've heard some of them respond and say that our businesses are literally crumbling. You would have people, I mean, hairdressers among others say, in fact, I come to work, the light is off, so I can't do anything for hours. And then I decide to go home, only to go home and be met with doozo at home as well, because <laughs> I'm running from the frying pan and I ended up uh, straight in the fire. And that is what members of the business community from those operating in some kiosk somewhere to that person operating on huge levels, pr production chain is saying, look, and now we have to fall on, you know, we're either forced to go solar or we have to get generators and all of that. I, I don't know what you think, but what then do you make of the PURC uh, coming through to give this ultimatum of seven days uh, to the ECG. The ECG has to come through, and the, the story, by the way, is in, in fine print on myjoyonline.com. You have seven days to provide detailed incident report on power outages, PURC to ECG. You can check it out there. What do you make of this directive? Well, look, if you read the entire document, there has been a certain level of agitation between PURC and ECG. PURLC feels that ECG is not doing the right thing. And as a regulator, they have every right to interrogate it further. The value chain players have been complaining that they have not been paid and they are not being paid. They made that complaint. PURLC feels that, look, the cash waterfall mechanism, which is the process put in place to make sure that everybody gets something small so that there's liquidity in the system, VRA, Rico and other companies are saying that, look, we are not being paid. So there was an audit of um, ECG that was carried out by um, PricewaterhouseCooper. And the PLC feels that they did, ECG did not comply. Mm. And I think the report is out there. There have been various levels of meetings on this report. ECG has an explanation to give, and they've always come to that meeting and given their explanation. I, I listened to PLC Samuel Dubik Mahama explain on that. In, in, on, in light of the recent report by the PRC, I listened to the MD of the ECG react to that. Yes. I was convinced on some points and not so convinced on other points. Because in that very conversation, exactly. in fact, Mr. Is it Ametogbo or Apetogbo, representing the IPPs, came and spoke, and he, he rebuffed some of the assertions of Samuel Dubik Mahama. So it's, it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, on, exactly. On that so that is, why, that is why PRC have come back to now issue this directive to say, look, Provide us with these things. We need to get clarity and basically move forward on this issue. So they've mm. given them timelines to provide them with the documentation that they need to be able to get clarity. Look, I, I honestly don't think that if you listen, like you said, when you listen to Honorable, uh, uh, what do you call it, the MD, Mohamed Dubek, he has explanations, right? And most of them, like you said, it is convincing what he did, why he did what he did. But look, we need to be fair to everybody. PULC will listen to the players, will get the information they need. And what Ghanaians want is that our lights should stay on. We should have reliable and stable power. I'm worried. Everybody's worried. It's not something that everybody thinks that everybody goes to sleep and they don't care. Our president stood in the floor of parliament and said that, look, doom so is a thing of the past, right? Which means that we are no longer going to shed load. Now, what is happening today, in some instances, is not like it's, syst it's systematic. It's not. It's just a matter of some maintenances that are happening. But you now have our friends on, in the NDC on the other side who are doing everything possible to push that to the front burner and say that, look, when the president says something, it's a lie. Ben, you will be amazed to see the length of which people are going to make sure that there's power disruption. Have you seen the images in front of the Daily Guide this morning? What images? There are people going around in rural areas to basically make sure that they take down the towers of ECG and Rico so that there is power outages in some communities. It will amaze you. What will amaze me is the fact that you find that amazing because I have known, whether it's street lights or anything of the sort, I know that there are people who steal cables, 
who use them for various purposes. So to put a political slant to it, I don't know about that. What I do know is that people take advantage in communities that are pretty quiet with people not very alert and steal some of this and use it for their own personal, some of them melt them and all of that, unless you are not aware of that. Well, Ben, uh, boats and knots, somebody will go and take boats and knots from a high tension cable. For what? What are they going to do the boats and knots? When you go to Kokumpe and Abu Sioka, you find the boats and knots on the floor. So well, somebody will go because they want to steal boats and knots. They will go and undo a high tension cable, a high tension pole. I don't think that that's what we are talking about here, Ben, please. I mean, I can understand people digging cables on the floor and stealing the copper. But what I'm talking about is when people go and go and screw, unscrew the bolts and not on the, on, on the towers of these high tension towers. What other motive would that be? If not just to create that thing that, oh, power, the light is not stable. In any so, case, Ghanians in, in... Are, sorry, go, go ahead, go ahead. Ghanaians are, 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 are discerning. I'm not mm. saying that it's the NDC that did it. That's not what I'm but saying. But you've basically alleged that. that. You've insinuated people, that. Well, I, I, I didn't say that. I mean, you said it. I didn't. I'm saying that I some people... It. Okay. Oh, no. The first part I said was that the NDC wants to push the light conversation to the forefront. Right. And I went on to say that some people around the country are, are going around basically creating this havoc so that lights will, be, will go off, so that the conversation of light interruption will come to the forefront. I'm not alleging, and if I came across as alleging that, I'm sorry, I take it back, but I'm nowhere alleging that it's NDC that did that. Mm. Uh, in having this conversation, we can also talk about debts owed and all of that. You remember famously, or infamously, whichever way you choose to look at it, Recently, uh, the same parliament where Mr. President stood and said they had dealt with Doomsaw, that same parliament went off recently in proceedings. And when Samuel Dubik Mahama was asked, he said, well, parliament is working. ECG is also working. Um, I guess we are showing working here. But looking at where we have, we have got to, you say we've not got to the point where we need a timetable. Power supply is still erratic. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission has given the Electricity Company of Ghana seven days to provide a detailed incident report on power outages for the period January 1, 2024 to date. Now, according to the commission, the ECG is also to state, and this is my next point, the volume of load curtailed, because you've been talking about how many, what's the peak and all of that. The volume of load curtailed for each power outage incident energy not served, and the number of customers affected. I believe the devil is right here in this paragraph. What are your expectations as far as that is concerned? Well, well um, we will see what ECG comes up with with the volume curtailed. Like I said, for one, nobody is denying the fact that in because in this maintenance period that we have, um, some management of load has not been done. So I don't think that everybody's going to say, ah, we told you, you guys were basically managing load and you said we went. We've admitted everybody had come to say that, look, it is because of this and this and this, that is why those load management happen. So the, the amount of load management that has basically happened, um, privately, some of us are privy to it. Uh, maybe in the media, if it is made available to the media, then you guys will probably also get uh, become privy to what has been shared. But there is a very important message that I want every Ghanaian to understand this morning. When we have instances like this, and some people will come and say, oh, government doesn't have money. Um, if government had money, they will buy uh, fuel so that the light won't go off. We are looking at prudent management of this economy. And there is not by any illusion that we are in IMF. Nobody is saying that this government is one of the richest governments in the world. We know we don't have money. Everybody admit that as a country, we are in IMF. How do you now safeguard the finances of the country and not overburden the Ghanaian populace? If you have a situation like this, and you decide that you will buy expensive fuel like diesel and LCO to keep the lights on for Ghanaians, bear in mind, I have always said that when it comes to power, if you don't pay by tariffs, you pay by taxes. So if government takes money to go and buy LCO, which is expensive for, go buy diesel, which is expensive for, and get the likes of T3 and Gensa to run these liquid fuels and keep the light on. In the next PLC review, government will have to submit these expenses to PLC and they will have to factor it into electricity tariffs so we pay for it. Does Ghanaians want to have increases in electricity tariffs? No. 
Recently, by God's grace, we had some 6% reduction for um, people who are high-end consumers over 300 kilowatt bank. What people should understand is that if the government feels that in the next two to three weeks, this problem can be resolved, why go and rush to buy these LCOs and the um, details to overburden the Ghanaian? So we all day in it together so that we can basically go through this short period of disruption. I think the communication is very important. What I expect to find in that resolution that PLC is trying to do is to call Brico also to the table. Because if you listen to ECG, the problem is not only with ECG. Gridco also has some questions to answer. So I think some of us will also be writing to um, PULC and say, look, if you are trying to do the regulation that you are trying to do, also bring Gridco to the table because they also have some questions to answer. How long was Doomso under the NDC? Oh, wow. From I think the whole thing started massively from 2013. Doomso lasted three years, thereabouts. More, more, more or less, yes. Three years. Um, it's been about two years of this intermittent power outages, sometimes for long periods of time in the Ashanti region, in Greater Accra. I have had my fair share. Ben, where, ben, oh, no, 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 hold, hold, hold. I let you make your point. I let you make your point. Let me, let me make my point. Where are you getting Let, let, me, let me make from. my point on this. I, I intentionally posed that question. It's been two years of this, and somehow you refer to it as this short period within which uh, uh, we are facing power outages. I, I, I just wanted to focus on your wording, the semantics. It lasted ben, three years I, under I, the Oswald well administration. Ben, two ben, years of this. The way you are doing and, there, it's like you're doing some cross-examination in court. What do you uh, Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it is what you do here. When you come on, it's going to be hard. That's just the way it is. But anyway, <laughs> before you go, before you go, <laughs> I like the way you're laughing. Before you go, uh, part of the directives of the PURC, it says, in respect of operational matters, detailed incident reports of power outages. Then it talks about uh, the ECG to, in respect of outages attributed by ECG to the 630 overloaded transformer during peak hours to give, you know, GPS locations, ratings and current loadings. It also talks about the time frame for compliance uh, by March 25th, the mode of compliance and the effect of non-compliance. Let me just read that and get your response. It says, non-compliance with this order shall be enforced by the commission under section 38 of Act 538 and Regulation 451 of the Public Utilities Regulatory Com Commission, that is Consumer Service Regulations 2020 LI 2413, which provide, and it goes on with offenses and penalties, sanctions against public utility among others. In other words, it's basically telling the ECG, if you fail to comply, we're going to have to crack the whip. Your take as we yeah. end. Um, ben, uh, you see, this two years thing that you mentioned, you see, let me tell you something. It, it are, even goes beyond that. Of our own, <laughs> let, let me say this, MPP government, and I don't let government is a victim of its own sources. For a big chunk of the last, from 2017 till when you call the two years, which I don't think there's two years, but there has been a very big improvement in the quality and standard of power supply to the nation. Right. So when we have entered a period where it is a bit unstable compared to the high standard that the Nanado led government have set, then yes, people will complain, which everybody will chest it and say, look, let's strive to even achieve better quality for Ghanaians. So I don't think it's two years, but if Ghanaians feel that the standard that was set from 2017 has lowered. Yes, then everybody is going to crack the whip to make sure that that standard is upheld and improved upon. Now, in terms of PULC and the message before you get to the PULC, there, 20 it, seconds on this. Um, how exactly has this administration set those standards, especially when we've had this conversation before? Not even one megawatt of electricity has been added. How has it set those high standards you speak of? It, it's not. It's not true. And Ben, the question no, I asked this you is that when they stop, no, no, signing let me, the let agreements me, you ask that versus question. what let is on the ground. Let me answer. When you say that not one megawatt has been added, is it that it was added to the grid or M or PPA signed? We, what are you referring added to? Added to the grid. Okay, so that's not true. I can run you through all the power that has been added to the grid since 2017. If you have time, I'll run you through that. We've so, added so, over so, 1,500 megawatts to the grid since 2017. So the agreements have been signed. Two, and, let, and me, they let, are... me, let, me, let me quickly run you through that. No, okay, go ahead. Two, go ahead. Assembly phase two, 
-hmm. same power. Mm -hmm. Um, Asogli phase two, same power. AXA, you mm -hmm. know, AXA came online after um the AXA came online after 2017. So Asogli phase two, right? AXA, same power. Amandi, okay, those are the big um, and then bear in mind, car power was moved from Tema to Takrade to double the capacity. Mm. So that was also an addition on the grid. Was after that an addition or a shuffling around of, of no of adi an addition capacity. because it was 250, it was 250, it was 250 when it was in um it was 250 when it was in Tema, and I think 235 was added to run on eight on gas when it went to Takrade. So it's never true that nothing has been added to the grid from 2017. Again, so, new power has added 50 megawatts of, of, of solar. Um, VRA has added 35 megawatts of solar. So mm. there has been a lot of addition to the grid post-2017. Mm. So, so these additions, where are they reflecting? Oh, they are in the, the, the what you call it? If you go into the Outlook, you see the Energy Commission Outlook, you will see all those powers that have been. You see, I have said that, Granted, those PPAs were signed in the, His Excellency John Mohammed's time. But when they were added to the grid, they were added to the grid post-2017. That's why I asked you, what's the, and, and, what are and, you referring to? And that to? is exactly PPA the point I was making. Added to the grid. That is the point I was making, that these were... And, and the last time you spoke about a continuum, which I agree. But this administration has not signed any of those that has been added on. Okay, they are so all that's from the previous administration. You, so, so, Ben... If you want to know what we've signed, then that's a different conversation. So that's why I asked you, what are you, what do you want to hear? Added to the grid or signed PPA? You but, said added but, to but, the but grid. You, you what you, has been added. Now you want to know what, what has been signed? I do know of what has you, been signed. Should I, should I tell you what has been signed? So it's, I think we can, we can wrap I, I, on that. Exactly. So that conversation is muted. In, in a minute. In a minute. not added on. In a minute. So the penalties and, and the PRC, you, you were about to go to that. In, in less than a minute. If yes, can... um, the penalties basically for me, I think that uh, we should uh, we should close PULC to bite. The reason that people feel like, look, they can flout some of these regulators because it's a, it's, it's, it's a penalty in fine. So they will find them and they can pay the fine and move on. Um, I think we should basically have a bit more. One of the conversations that are coming up that is a bit interesting and my committee is looking at it is that is it possible for a government-run regulatory to basically, um, so, or a regulatory, let's call it a regulatory agency, to basically regulate government-run institutions? Is it, is it really effective? Okay, so we should level to try and create some level of independency to now bring in the private participation players in the value chain so that the regulator will be able to regulate better or okay. give more um, powers to the regulator though it can now bite better on these government-run agencies as well. Kojo, um, we are virtual, but fist bump to you, knuckle bump to you. Boza, um, uh -huh. thank you for joining uh, the conversation. Uh, we, we, we should, Ben, I think we should plan. Me and you, we can do once a month in studio, and I'll be educating you, because there's a lot of education that needs to go on between me and you to basically make sure that the right. MPP and the NATO-led government with Dr. Baumia coming in, we are the best for the nation. Ayo, I hear you. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Kojo Safwa uh, Poku, he is an energy analyst and he's joined us for uh, this all-important conversation on power and the directives of the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission as far as the ECG uh, is uh, concerned. Uh, there'll still be more time to talk about this. But